Just then, I hear the sound of a door opening. Mocha twitches. I look into the lounge and see Daru wiping the sweat off his brow with a towel as he comes in. Guten Morgen. Guten Morgen. You sure are early. Ever since university went into summer break, Dow has been coming into the lab in the morning less and less. Then again, he's also been staying a more night ball and more. I went to bed early. Wake up at five this morning. Uh, Oh man, it's, it's not supposed to be this hot in the morning. Oh, oh, Okoin. Who's this what sexy 3D woman? Ah, let me introduce you. This is Shining Finger, Kiryu Moka. Yeah, she's kind of sexy, erotic type woman. Shining Finger? Shining Finger? Does her hand glow with all of some power? No. But she's definitely an Esper. An Esper? That's stupid. Watch her type. Well, whatever. Welcome to the lab, Kyuyoshi. <laughs> Even though Daru bowed his head, Maruka doesn't so much as look at him. He's now looking down on the phone. Not that he actually ever really looked away. Daru turned red. <laughs> what a magnificent ignore skill. Are you looking down on me because I'm a fat ass ultra? You're a mainstream woman, aren't you? Um, Moka. This is my favourite right arm super hacker, Daru. <laughs> Moka lowers her chin in imperceptibly. Was that supposed to be a bow? Her expression hasn't changed at all. Everything Daru says flows cleanly through one ear and out of the other. And it's just she was so eager to meet her super hacker before. You know what, now that I've looked more and more about Mo at Moaka, she actually reminds me a bit of Fujiko Mine from Lupin. Hey, Okarin, did you do something to her? Like what? We're taking pictures. Pictures? Pictures? So you're going to blackmail her and force her to be our sex toy? Stop applying eroge logic to reality. My bad. Dow's jokes aren't helping. Oh right. I thought it was an upgrade we could use to make the phone wave. Like what? You know, I was a huge fan of me asked to send d in the past. Yeah. I want to simplify the process, and also make it possible to forward from a phone wave dedicated phone. Forward? What do you mean? Right now, you can only send D-mail to a phone attached to a phone wave, right? That's right, in yesterday's experiment, my phone was attached to a phone wave. So my inbox took front of D-mails. That's pretty inconvenient. If you give a phone wave's dedicated phone forwarding function, we can use it to send emails to anyone we want. And how long will the upgrade take? Two or three hours? That's if it helped me, right? Understood. I'll help. Okay. Daryl really is reliable. I walked up to him, my hand raised a high five. But he completely ignores it. He sits on the sofa and begins eating. Duh. Oh. Damn it. Pay attention, Daru. I so low my hand. 
whatever. Once your upgrades are complete, we well, gather the lab members and begin discussing with serious email use. Time to think about the practical applications of sending mail to a past. Another mail? I could ignore it, but ringtone keeps demanding my attention. It's far more irritating than normal conversations. You said something about sending emails to a past, didn't you? What does that mean? Tell me! Oh yeah, I completely forgot she was here, didn't we? Damn you idiot! How can you make such a basic mistake? America, whose eyes have never once left her phone, is now staring straight at me. I need to talk my way out of it somehow. She may just be a part-timer, but she's still a journalist of sorts. She'll learn to build the world's first time machine. There's no way we'll be able to keep it under wraps. The organisation is sure to find out. I can't let that happen. You misheard us. No. Moka shakes her head. I know what I heard. Moka's pretty persistent. I know it because of her mail attacks. She won't let me escape so easily. So what should I do? Frustration. I put my phone to my ear. It's me. There's a problem. No, it's not that. Information on number 8 has got leaked to a third party. Yeah, I know. I need to do something. Depending on the situation, I might need to silence her. Yeah, I know. You can't have the organisation know about this. Science gate seems to enjoy sending people my way. <laughs> Don't worry. My seat in hell can wait for the rock rock is over. L. Psy. Kongru. Should I have an L. Psy Kongru? Character as well? Nah, too much work. Put my phone into my pocket and turn back to Molka. Who is that? It doesn't concern you. Mocha looks down and begins typing another mail. FB. Since she doesn't include her usual signature, does that mean she was in a hurry? Her expression doesn't change at all, though. Anyway, I disregard the con male's contents and take one step towards Moaka. She makes no attempt to escape. I'm standing between her and the door. But staring at that face. Kirio Moaka. You must swear to protect our secret. Or die. Choose now. No time to think it over. No alternatives either. You've learned our secret and now you must pay the price. You'll kill me? Only if you could try to go public. Underestimate the insane mad scientist, Hoi Kyoma, at your peril. Are you at it okay, again, Okarin? Dara's standing behind me. Turn around in surprise. Kiryushi, was it? Okarin's kind of crazy. So it's okay to ignore him when he talks like this. That's mood. Can't you see what's going on, Super Hacker? And she, her eyes just look absolutely um, scared of me now. Thank you. Imbecile! Because your palace tongue, she found out her phone wave is a time machine. A time machine. Um, 
Oh, it's Billy Callis too, you know. This is awful. Everything that could go wrong has. How do I recover? First, I need to silence Morka. Good morning. Uh, I'd want to account to please. How did me, Yori? I dropped to my knees in utter despair. We're finished. It's impossible to talk our way out of this. Kiryu Moraka. I'll tell you everything. Now I'm a favour to ask. Tremble, right arm of mine. By the covenant, I command thee, come forth, hellfire of darkest black. Fulfill my desire for ultimate destruction. Ashes to ashes. Dust to dust. I pull hard with both my arms. Tearing a microwave door free with a terrible screech. The screws are loosened, but it sounds like I might have broken something too. Well, whatever. Ah, now I can't warm up any more chicken. This isn't a microwave anymore. This is a time machine. That's not fair, go buy a new microwave, I'll go in. I don't have that kind of money. Besides, this is Darry's idea. Removing the microwave door means we don't have to open it every time we want to send a D-mail. Darry is currently reprogramming the microwave so it won't stop when the door's open. It's already programmed the forwarding feature. Moka takes a picture of her phone. I cover the lens with my hand. I told you, no pictures. In commemoration. Of what? Anyway, no pictures. Moka complies. The register was Lamem number 5 just a bit earlier. As I get a message from Lukako. My dad usually acts normal, but it gets strange when he only family members are around. Like when I was raised as a girl in the first place. Dad says I was supposed to have a mother sister born before me. But when he asked Mum, she said he was making it up. I'm kind of fed up with him. Yes, I did. Ten practice swings. That's it! There! Red and Dad lies a key to that tragedy that occurred 15 to 20 years ago. Or. How does she know you he was lying? Your father may even be embracing some darkness within his heart when he hides from everyone. Do not like cross dressing and just say so. Otherwise I'll well keep having fists fun. If you want to change your status quo, then burn those Miko robes in the courtyard. No! I'm not gonna tell him to do that, because that's a travesty. You can't go without those robes is like bread without butter. You can eat bread without butter, but why would you? It was a choice between letting her leak word with Time Machine or forcing her to join our group. I reluctantly chose the latter. <sighs> I've gone soft. Beyond me would have killed her out of second Moika is standing right next to me. But my monologue has no effect. Looks like she wants to ask me something. Nanda. What is it? Is it really a time machine? Is it really a time machine? Yes. You'll see. But you can't tell anyone, okay? 
mooie kanats. Joos, programma wat dat? Oh, hey, program complete. Carice was lying on the sofa. Looks up from the technical manual she was reading. She got about 30 minutes ago. Then, let's resume the experiments. But won't we manage to scold us again? <laughs> Don't worry, yesterday I made this promise with Mr. Brown. I swear there won't be any more shaking today. In other words, no shaking promise only applied yesterday. So since the day is yesterday tomorrow, we can shake it all we want. That doesn't sound anything. Why you're so confident is a mystery to me. In other words, Christina, you want me to raise Mr. Brown? No! Besides, I don't think like a whim like you stands a chance against him. He's so muscly! Unfortunately, it's impossible to experiment without shaking the building. I have no choice but to negotiate with Mr. Brown somehow. Your four members look at me with anticipation. Are they planning to sacrifice me? <laughs> Is this a choice of Steins Gate? <laughs> how do I? I'm trying to think of a way to avoid talking to a manager. I wander over to a window and look outside. Hmm? Huh? The street below is mostly empty. Oh, is that his daughter, I wonder? His, the apple of his eye. A girl is polishing a bicycle in front of a building. A much younger girl is squatting next to her, watching her work. They're alone. I can only see the backs of her heads from here, but I know exactly who they are. Hey, you, part-time warrior. In a corner, Susa looks left and right before while wife brings a sweat off her brow. For fun, you can up here. Lisa. Sir! You know what? Let's speak to the next episode, because that's been long enough. Bye bye.